Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about Dollar Tree Spring DIYs and inspiration. I am so ready for spring, ready for the sunshine, the new life, all of the hope that spring brings. I hope that you are too and that you enjoy these DIYs. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I am so excited to show you this project. I absolutely love the final result. Now, a few weeks back, I showed you the My Dollar Tree haul and I got this cute little picket fence sign from Dollar Tree. So, and I had so many of you be like, oh, I've had those, I've seen those, or I'm excited to see what you do. So I hope that this is something that you maybe haven't seen before and it turns out super cute. So hopefully you can give this a try. Now on this particular sign, these things come off so easy. Both signs that I have tried to remove things from, they pop right off, they don't ruin the sign. So hopefully that's how everybody finds their sign. So I just get everything removed from the sign and then I just cover it in white chalk paint. You could do whatever color that you would like. And then I'm going to go put uh, with a Sharpie marker, just put the slats back on this uh, fence by just using a ruler and drawing some straight lines there. And then I'm going to go over them with some white paint to dull them down a little bit because I don't want the huge contrast of the black with the, um, I want it to look aged and kind of more natural if that makes sense sense. Hopefully it does. I know I say if that makes sense a lot, but I guess in my mind, I just want to make sure that I'm saying it so you can understand it. So I apologize for that. Anyway, now I'm just taking some antiquing wax on a chip brush and I wiped a little bit of it off on my baby wipe there. And then I'm just slowly going back and forth here on each of the slats to kind of give it a wood feel. And, um, and then I'll kind of go back and you want to make sure not to go over an area that you've already done because that will smear the wax and it won't give you the really uh, stre good streak lines there. Now these boxes I'm sure you've seen at Dollar Tree, I'm removing the centers out of them and we're just going to use the bases of these little drawers. So I'm just using some wood glue and some hot glue to get these glued together. And I had somebody ask me if that wouldn't compromise the wood glue by using hot glue and it does not at all. It's actually pretty common practice uh, if you don't have like clamps that size or something or in a pinch to use hot glue to clamp them close that instant hold uh, to keep the wood glue there and in place. Now I do have clamps, so I am just going to clamp this together and I wasn't intending on doing this, but I really don't want there to be a space between those little boxes. I want them to look as cohesive as possible. Now I'm taking some craft sticks. You could do painter sticks. You could do the pops craft popsicle sticks, whatever. These are just some sticks that I got on Amazon. I'll see if I can link them below for you. And they don't have like the curved edge, like the painter stick. That's why I like them. And I thought it would really elevate this to have a look like a little planter box if I put this edge on it. So I just cut it to size just by eyeballing, you know, kind of where I measured it, cutting it with my scissors. And then I'm just using the wood glue and the hot glue. You do want to make sure you can see there that I don't put the hot glue over the wood glue. You don't want those two to mix. You want the hot, the wood glue to actually only be touching the wood. And then I just cover this in white paint. Uh, I went back and forth if I wanted to do like a, just stain it brown, which would be really cute too. But I am really happy with how it looks all together at the end. I like the really light uh, color to it. So then this is just one of these cute little signs that they do at Dollar Tree all year long. This is one of like the hollow ones, if if you can see what I'm talking about here, um, that's not like the solid wood and that's what we want. And so I just removed that little hanger because I want this to be like a little tray shelf on here. So I'm just going to measure this. You can see it's way too big for how it is. So I need to cut it down. So I'm just kind of measuring it there and seeing exactly how I want it. And you can kind of see, if you could, the cameras are really hard to pick up, that I drew a little line right there where I'm going to cut this. Now I pull out my miter box and I cut this down with my miter box. So you can do that however you would like. You could also build like with just using some paint sticks, your own um, little tray to go there. I just thought it would be, I was gonna try to use the sign and it actually works out really well. Now I need this to be closed on the end. So the piece that I cut off, I am just going to tear that little end piece off. It snaps right off and just using some super glue of some sort, I'm just going to glue that back onto the end so it makes a shorter sign. Now by all means, if you can find a shorter sign at Dollar Tree that works, it's already this size, definitely use that. 
So this paper just peels off of here. And then if you spray it with some water and let it sit for a couple of minutes, you can scrape all of that glue and all of the residue and the excess paper off. So I just get that all clear. Um, you don't really wanna paint over it because it will start to peel up the paper. It'll, it'll absorb the paint and it won't look very nice. So I do recommend taking all of that paper off. Now I paint that other tray white and then I go back in and distress everything because you guys know that I love to distress things. So completely optional here, how you decide to do this. I didn't sand any of it. I only used uh, just antiquing wax on my chip brush. And I just went over all of the edges and I thought that little lip going around the edge there gave it a really good dimension. It added a lot with the, uh, to add a little more distressing to it. And now I'm gonna glue this onto our little fence here using just some super glue. So I don't use any hot glue because I didn't want it to push out at all. I wanted it to be as flush as it could. And sometimes with hot glue, it will dry a little bit before you push it and it will not let it sit flush to the thing. So that's why I did that. And I didn't have any clamps that would really clamp that really good. So now I'm just distressing this other little tray here, just the same way, just antiquing wax on a little chip brush and going around getting the coverage that I want. And then on the back side of it, I also use some super glue and then place that and I could kind of get the corners but there was a little bowing in the middle so I just held it with my fingers for about 60 seconds for it to dry you guys look at how cute this little fence like potting bench I don't even know what you want to call it but I think it's so cute so now I'm just going to uh, accessorize it and you guys this is something that you can use all year long and accessorize with all sorts of different seasons uh, I'm just putting a little beaded garland kind of fits right over those little pegs on that the pickets on that little fence there and the little tray lets you just stick some things in kind of think of like an alternative you guys know I love to do like different types of tiered trays and I feel like this really kind of fits that bill and you can just see that things just sit right in there so here's a little bonus DIY. Uh, I wanted something else on my shelf there, but I couldn't find anything in my stash that really worked. So I'm just taking, this is a wooden nameplate card for like a table setting. And on one side, it's a chalkboard. It's just the plain wood on the other side. And it came from Hobby Lobby in a pack of like 10. It was like two or $3. So keep an eye open for those because I love this shape. And this is just a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer that I am using. I thought this was so cute. If you guys follow me on Instagram and you see this transfer at your Dollar Tree, message me and let me know I would love to find some more of them. Now as I'm peeling this back if there's an area that the design is not fully transferred I just lay it back down and then I just go over it with my little craft stick there to make sure that it's fully transferred. Where the antiquing wax does make it take a little bit of extra time because that wax it doesn't want to stick to the best. You guys this is one of those items that I kind of visualized it I had the little idea and as I was putting it together I'm like this could be a total fail but oh my gosh like I am so excited with the outcome of this I think it's absolutely beautiful it's going to be so fun to decorate for all different seasons it's a piece that can stay out all year long in my home and it was constructed with all Dollar Tree items like that just blows me away is this something that you guys would make if you did would you leave it up year-round I would love to know your thoughts on this piece this is such a fun DIY and it can be made with all Dollar Tree products. So I'm using this welcome sign, one of these wood round signs, and then this tile piece. I love these tile pieces from Dollar Tree. Now this is actually inspired by a piece that I saw Brenda from Rustic and Lace make in the 5 under 5 challenge. I'll leave a link to her video so you can see how cute her project is that she made, or I'll leave a photo of it here so you can see. But it totally inspired me that I wanted to make something similar out of the, I had all of these pieces that I wanted to do. So I'm just cutting this tin piece. It's not really tin, it's just like a plastic. I cut it down to fit the circular shape of that sign. When you're gluing it on here, be careful because that is plastic, it will radiate that heat and become hot. So I'm just using my brayer to make sure that that gets adhered to the wood piece for my sign. I love these tile pieces. The, the blue color is a new color that Dollar Tree has had. And so I'm really excited to kind of work with this one. Now I was showing you there that I had a little piece of where the edge of the tile was that hit the the top of my sign and so I'm just that's where I place the top of the sign because I'll cover it up with a bow now I'm giving this a very aged look with some antiquing wax and a baby wipe and I'm just kind of pushing it all over I wanted this to look extremely aged in farmhouse so really this step would be completely optional. So now I'm just removing the hanging twine on this welcome sign. Just be careful when you're doing this because I felt it kind of like wobble a little bit, almost like it would break in half. So just be really careful removing that. You could even cut it off would be easier. And I started putting some antiquing wax on with a baby white because I wanted it to have that dark brown color, but it was kind of not giving the coverage that I wanted. So I just went into a method of using a brush to adhere it with and then, or to apply it with. And then I did 
did take a chip brush with some white chalk paint on it to kind of make it pop that three-dimensional look. Honestly, I don't feel that that added too much to it, so you could probably skip that step as well. But I'm just using some hot glue, and then I am just lining it up to where those letters all fit onto my sign, and I'm using that line that's provided on the tile to kind of make sure that I get it straight. Now this twine came from the nautical line at Dollar Tree this year and I have loved it. This is rope, not twine though. They did have twine, which is really cute. That's what Brenda ended up using on her sign. But I'm just taking this rope and I'm just going to glue all around the edge to kind of give this a finished, more finished look. Um, I just thought it kind of added a, a little something to it, something extra. It was just there and I thought it was really cute. So I'm just using a little bit of glue on the edges and then I do work in little segments as you can see here and I'll place that glue down and then just gently just make sure you don't burn your fingers with that glue. Um, this would be a perfect project to wear your little silicone finger caps uh, for and I think I kind of use them here and there throughout this. When I get around uh, all the way around the sign I just cut that excess off and then just glue it down there and you can see I'm using my little silicone finger cap there. And now I need some greenery so I just took one of these little sprigs from Dollar Tree and cut it up so I had a couple of pieces to go on either side of my sign there and then what I've decided is I needed a bow and I have this burlap ribbon and this would be completely optional and I know Dollar Tree sells burlap ribbon you could even just use jute twine but I decided to make a little bow here just by making a loop out of the burlap there and then just some tails. You can kind of watch what I'm doing. And I just fold that little bow over and then I fold the tails to kind of tie all together here because I wanted those tails to kind of hang downwards rather than out of the sides of the loops if that I think that makes sense. Um, and you can see I just tie it off with a little piece of twine because we'll cover that up in a minute. And on these little sprigs of greenery, I tie them with twine too, because I thought that would be the easiest to make sure that they don't come falling off of there. And I just have to glue one piece on rather than four pieces. So in my mind, that made sense. And then I just put a little bit of glue there and tie that bow. Now you can see I did dovetail those. And when I glue my ribbon down, I kind of pull those little tails down so they I do have more of a downward motion. And I just glued a little hanging piece onto the back. But I think this turned out absolutely darling. How cute would this be on a front door or hanging on a porch somewhere? I think it is so cute. What do you guys think of this? This little pack of pots came from Dollar Tree and you get two of them. They have these every springtime, so hopefully you can get your hands on some. They also sell them, I mean, at Walmart or anywhere where there's a greenhouse. I really feel like you can find some little pots. Or if you have something on hand, definitely use that. So I just want to rough up this terracotta. I mean, terracotta is beautiful the way that it is, but I really love kind of making it look aged or rustic. And so I'm just taking some white paint on a chip brush and just gently going around. What I did is I dipped the brush in the paint and dabbed it off onto like a baby wipe or a towel or something, and then just light went over all of the edges of those two pots there. And now I'm taking some reindeer moss. I love using reindeer moss for springtime because I feel like it really just brings that natural look in. And I'm taking a barbecue skewer here. This helps me uh, for a couple of reasons. If you use hot glue, which I do, it's not, it's going to kind of help you from burning your fingers because that glue will seep through there. But I'm tucking it down into the pot. I kind of stacked these pots kind of skiwampus here. You can tell there where the other one is sticking out. I mean, you can see how I've done that here. And I want to be able to stick that moss like it's growing out from under there almost like this was left out in your yard or your potting shed or something like all winter long and it started to have some moss growing here and you'll kind of see what we do with the top of it um I don't know I like to come up with stories for my DIY sometimes to kind of help me come up with inspiration but you can see I'll glue that and I'm just taking that down over the edge on that particular piece right there and you'll see here that I'll tuck the top of it down down in and then I'll I, that was just a little extra there that I had to pull off there but so that way it looks like the moss was kind of coming down over the pot and now I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and some craft paper to stick in this top pot here because I want to fill up that space I mean you could use some styrofoam but there really isn't a need to for with what I'm doing so now I'm moving on to step two of this DIY and I'm going to make a cute little bird's nest to go on the top kind of like some birds saw this on your little potting table and they decided to come make a little nest and put their eggs there so so I'm just going to kind of manipulate this Spanish moss into a nest here. So I'm just kind of going around and I'm kind of just making it a circular shape and I'm wanting to kind of make an indentation in the middle where like their eggs would go. Spanish moss can be really messy so definitely make sure that you are prepared for that. Now 
I saw a thing on Pinterest where somebody made a bird's nest and they used some kind of adhesive when they did it. I couldn't really think of anything I had besides Mod Podge. It ends up working okay, but I mean, you could definitely do a little research to see what other um, materials that you could use to do this. But I mean, it worked out okay, but you have to use a little bit. I just wanted to stop that Spanish moss from falling everywhere for one, but I also wanted to be able to, for it to hold its shape to kind of work with. So I'm just using it with a brush. You can see there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. Uh, and your hands get very sticky. So you could wear gloves would be something. I mean, this is a learning process for me and I was just kind of trying to see how it worked out, but it ends up looking really good, I think. So it just takes a little bit as that Mod Podge is drying, it's starting to kind of take its shape and its form. And then uh, I just use some hot glue to stick that down here onto uh, that paper in the pot. And then I'm just using something that I can poke it down with and make sure that that little indentation in the center is there so I can place some cute little eggs there. And then I'm just gonna trim off any excess that I have there that I wanna kind of make it look kind of uniform, but I mean, it's a bird's nest. So I mean, you know, it, it, there's no uniformity at all to that, but I just trim around the edges there, as you can see, like I'm doing. And then I even put more Mod Podge on it. And this is because it's set, it's where I want it. And hopefully that helps it stay in place. Now, if you don't want to go to all that process, I'm just showing you an option there with a different bird's nest. You can find those at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, uh, maybe even Dollar Tree. You can find all things like that. So you don't have to go through the process of making a nest if you don't want to. And then I just have a couple of little eggs there that I thought were super cute. And I just decided to stick those down in there. You can glue those in. Mine had some little like toothpicks on there that kind of stuck all the way down into there. And so they're pretty secure. And then I thought it would be really cute to take some reindeer moss and kind of add it to the nest or around the eggs, like a little bit more moss is growing around here. Or the birds grabbed that to help make their nest. And I just thought it turned out really cute. And you can see, I'm just even tucking some of the moss inside of that the reindeer moss inside of the Spanish moss we've got several types of moss going on here but <laughs> but I really thought that that kind of brightened up that nest a little bit with that you guys I think this turns out so cute I love my little story behind it like it was just kind of something natural that happened in your garden but I just think this is so cute and I mean I just this is the epitome of springtime to me I just think this turned out darling what do you guys think of this one I happened to be at Dollar Tree one day when they were getting a shipment of these 3D orbs in. They were kind of stocking them. So I grabbed one thinking, oh, I'll figure something to do with this. And honestly, I wish that I had grabbed more because I have not seen them since then. And that was like all the way back in February. So I just put the orb together and I'm taking this candlestick from Dollar Tree and I'm just using a massive amount of hot glue to glue this orb to this candlestick. So I'm just, you just want to you're gonna hold it for a while, I guess is what I'm saying. And then I wanted to have some type of little platform there in case you wanted to stick like a plant is what I put in there, a candle, something. So I just used one of my canning jar lids and glued that in there because I am going to spray paint this and do some other things with it, you'll see. And so you won't be able to tell that that's what it is. So I'm just using some matte spray paint and I had a little wood finial that I did glue on the very top. And then I am going around to just give this a really rough up finish and then I'm just staining some beads here because there is a gap between the pillar the candle pillar and the little jar lid so I thought it would be a perfect area to kind of tuck in some beads to give this a really roughed up, rusted, old aged look, I am just using a bunch of different colors of paint and I'm using like a garbage sack, or not a garbage sack, but I will sometimes use it as a garbage sack, but a grocery sack that I had. And I am just using some of the truffle paint, some elephant chalk paint, and I am just going over this to make it look like it's kind of wrought iron that has sat out in your garden for a long, long time and just kind of started to age and rust. I decide that I want it to look even more aged, so I am taking some baking soda, a little bit of orange paint, and then some more of the truffle color of Waverly, but really just any brown that you have would do, or even like a maroon. And I just mix kind of um, a couple of those paint colors together with some baking soda, and then just lightly go around and just kind of pushing it on with my paintbrush to kind of give it a little bit more. You can kind of see how it really does just kind of look rusted and aged. 
I just really like how it came out. And I love using the baking soda because when things kind of rust and they bubble up a little bit, they really do have that texture. And the baking soda really does kind of help give it that realistic look. Now I'm just going ahead and touching up that bottom since it kind of was the shiny color of the white. I wanted it to kind of be more matte. So I did cover that with some chalk paint is what I did there. So I'm just taking a pot right there that I had and I just painted it white and kind of roughed it up. That's what my plant is going to go in. And then I just used a little bit of elephant chalk paint to kind of give a little bit of an aged look to the base of it. And now I'm just going to take these beads and hot glue them in all the way around that little gap that is between my jar lid and the uh, candle pillar. I do take just a little bit of what dry paint is left in my brush there and kind of brush it over the beads and everything to kind of brighten them up a bit and make it look like one cohesive piece. And there is my little pot that I did with a little bit of white paint and then a little bit of the elephant chalk paint. And I just stuck a cute little plant in it. This turned out so cute. And I have used this in my house all year long and I've gotten so many compliments on it. And I do kind of change the plant up a little bit for the different seasons and everything. But I would love to know down in the comments what you guys think of this. If you guys are a fan of this, if you like this, I would love to know. This is such a fun, easy project here. I have this, I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can see it was like $2.99 that I got. And I'm just removing the sticker off of the front here. I removed it off the back as well. And this is a great sign for what it is, but we're going to change it up. I love looking through the clearance section at Hobby Lobby or even Walmart uh, to find signs that are on sale that maybe weren't so popular or left behind because as a crafter, I love to change things up and repurpose them and use them for my own. And so I'm just using a, fingernail file. I love using a fingernail file in my crafting to sand. Um, I just, I can manipulate it really well. I just really love using those. So I sand off all of the words. Now I'm showing you there, this is from Dollar Tree right here and you could definitely use this. I have some other, something else in mind for it or else I probably would have used that. So if you see those at Dollar Tree, pick, pick them up and that way you can continue on with the project very easily. So now I'm just taking some white chalk paint and I'm just gonna cover up that area that I sanded. We're gonna put something over the top of this so you're not really gonna see it, but I just wanted to make sure it was kind of uniform. Now, this is from the Dollar Tree calendars from this year and it's from the February page. And I, this is the farmer's market and you can see here this one, I couldn't use the front because it, the, the words were a little too long for my thing. You can see the front says farmer's market, the actual page says garden on there. Look at these cute, I'm so excited to use this calendar in so many different projects. So I kind of used my thumbnail, you can kind of see the indentation. I laid that on my sign and kind of did that around the edges. So I had a um, template of where to cut. Now the front page, if you can use on your surface, is a little bit thicker. And so just to let you guys know when you do uh, your crafting, but it had that words on the bottom of it that said like 2023 calendar or something. I don't want that on my DIY. <laughs> so that's why I'm using the actual page here, but I just think this is so beautiful. Now I'm just using some Elmer school glue. You guys know that this is like my best friend with crafting. I have, and it's particularly this purple Elmer school glue. I never have any problem with it peeling up, especially if you like on a paper project like this, if you seal it at the end with some uh, spray uh, clear coat or Mod Podge or something like that. But I really find that I have a lot less wrinkling than I do with Mod Podge. Mod Podge and me sometimes get along, sometimes we don't. And I really feel like I always get along with this school glue here. So I glued the surface there, put it all over, and then I just do the edges of the paper as well because I want that double bond. And I want to make sure that you get all of the edges because that way when you place this on, it's not going to peel up. So I'm just checking the back to make sure I have it set correctly because it's got a little stand on it. I didn't want to do it upside down because I'm notorious for doing stuff like that and having to redo it. So I'm just carefully lining up the edges here and then I'm working from the center out to help push this down and alleviate or eliminate any uh, wrinkles that you might have. And you can kind of see I'm rubbing some if I start to get any wrinkles and just very lightly push this out. And depending on how thick your paper is, you'll kind of, you just don't want it to tear or anything like that. 
Now I do have this Mod Podge roller here. I'll link that down in my description box. I love this thing. And it really helps just kind of get a really good bond between that paper and the surface that you're working with. And then I did just pull my little Cricut scraper out. You can find these at Dollar Tree now. They're really, it's not the Cricut brand, it's a Dollar Tree brand, but I mean, it works just the same. And I just kind of helped flatten that out. Now I'm taking this little stencil brush and I just kind of dipped it in some white paint and I'm just kind of going to make this look a little more aged than it looked. Completely optional, completely a matter of personal preference. I just feel like sometimes it takes a sheen off of the paper so it doesn't look super glossy. So it, it looks kind of more... I don't know, less like a calendar page and more like a, a piece of art, I guess. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so, but I just love how this turns out and I think it is so cute. It was so simple, so inexpensive and Dollar Tree has some really great pictures. So hopefully you can find some of these calendars or use this idea from maybe an older calendar that you have from last year. It's a, such a fun project and so perfect for springtime. This is such an easy project to do and I got inspiration for this off of Pinterest and I saw somebody make carrots out of clothespins, which I thought was a brilliant idea because when you take the clothespins apart and place the flat ends together, they literally look like carrots. So it's brilliant and I love it. So you're just going to do that to however many carrots you want in your box. Just use some hot glue to glue those together. You could use wood glue if you wanted a really strong bond, but these carrots are not gonna be doing that much other than sitting there. So hot glue should work just fine for you. I did paint the carrots with an orange color and then I am taking just one of these little crates from Dollar Tree and I am just painting it in a green color. I have loved this color for springtime and I think it contrasts really well with the carrots but you could customize it to whatever you would like to do. Now I'm just taking some of the grass from the floral section at Dollar Tree and I am just cutting it off at the end and that is what I'm using for the little uh, greenery on the bottom of the carrot. Whatever you have that you would like to use. I know carrot greenery does not traditionally look like this but it it works for the color and whatever so you can use whatever you would like but I'm just taking the little end there and I'm just putting a little hot glue and then I will just carefully place that onto the top of the carrot and I'll just hold it into place until it dries and I'm just gonna do that with all of my carrots Using my Cricut, I just cut out this little uh, bunny bait little box here. It has this little bunny. It says five cents or something on it. I just found it on Cricut Design Space. Uh, you would not have to do this. It would be completely optional. You could even just use a Sharpie just to write something cute across the front of it. You wouldn't even have to make it like bunny themed for Easter since if it's going to be like springtime, you could just do something, just carrots five cents or something like that on it. But I also take some antiquing wax and just go around the edge and on all those little ridges in that crate just to kind of age it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to peel off my stencil and it is a very rustic look and so I'm not super concerned about how well the transfer turns out. Just so you can see it, it kind of just adds a little decorative touch under the front. I just glue a couple pieces of styrofoam into the bottom. That is where your carrots are going to be placed. And then I just kind of spaced out the carrots to begin with and made little holes in the styrofoam so I knew how far apart to space them. And now I'm just sticking a little bit of glue down in each of those little holes I created in the styrofoam and placing each carrot in there and hold it up until it dries because styrofoam and hot glue, you know, the combination kind of melts the styrofoam. So if you hold it until it dries, you'll get a very firm hold in there. And then I just take some Spanish moss. I put a little bit of glue down so that Spanish moss stays nice and tucked down in there and then just using a barbecue skewer or a dowel or something I just put that little Spanish moss in between each of the carrots kind of cover up that styrofoam and then just to add a little bit of texture to it I think it just turns out so cute this little box of carrots here it is so perfect for springtime or just to have that nice pop of orange in your decor Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends.
So I have tried this technique before and I absolutely love it. We are going to print on some tissue paper. So I'm cutting just a normal piece of tissue paper to be just smaller than a regular size piece of copy paper. And I'm going to put that shiny smooth side of the tissue paper down towards the paper and then just tape down all sides with whatever tape you have. I just have painter's tape on hand there. Uh, but you just wanna make sure all the tissue paper is taped down and you'll feed it through your printer just like normal paper and the image prints right on the tissue paper. Now, as I'm cutting this out, I just wanna let you know that the ink will kind of bleed through to that copy paper, so just be aware of that. I found this darling little flower bucket at Dollar Tree this week, so hopefully you'll be able to find them, but I thought it would be fun to give this a really cute uh, blue, pastel blue color for spring, and I'm going to make some faux rust. So I use baking soda along with like a brown color, like a truffle. I use Merlot, a little bit of yellow, and then like the pumpkin orange. And I just get a mixture of all these colors going together and keep adding baking soda, which gives it texture until I get the color that I think resembles rust the most. You wanna be very sparing with the yellow, but I promise you the yellow is what makes this because when you look at things that actually rust, it will have like the different variations of colors. So once I get this on my brush, which it's quite thick because of the baking soda. I just kind of dab it in. You can see how I'm going all over there. And you just do that until your heart's content with how much rust you want on your project. Now with this tissue paper, I'm just taking a brush with some water and going around the design. And then I will just lightly pull apart the tissue paper to kind of give it a torn look. So instead of a clean cut line with scissors, it's kind of more torn and like natural looking. Now using matte Mod Podge, I'm just putting a layer down on my bucket where I want the front to be and uh, just kind of do a very thin layer of it. And then you're going to take your, and I'm just spreading it so it's even, you're gonna take your image and you're just going to lightly press it down starting in the middle and then just lightly press because the tissue paper will tear once it gets a little bit of moisture on it. So you're just going to lightly press and if there's any bubbles, you just kind of lightly smooth those out. This is very sped up of how I did that. So just know you're going to work a little slow. And then I take the matte Mod Podge. And right now I'm just going around the edges to make sure the edges are all down. And then after I have that, I will go over very lightly with a very light coat of Mod Podge over the design. And then to make that image kind of blend in a little more, I take and dry brush some of the original blue color over the top of the design. Now, if you did this on a white bucket, if you'd painted it white, that image would completely disappear and you would not be able to see the part of the tissue paper at all. And it picks it up kind of in the light on camera, the, the tissue paper, but honestly, when you're looking at it with like your naked eye, you can hardly see that it's tissue paper. But I love this design. I just threw some of my peonies left over from one of my wreath projects and put in there and I think this looks so beautiful. That rust looks so natural to me. It looks like it's been sitting out in your garden like all winter long. You forgot to bring it in and it just kind of rusted. I just think it's so spring and so cute and I love this color. Let me know what you guys think about that rust down in the comments if you like it or if you're not a fan. These little mini charcuterie or cutting boards from Dollar Tree are darling. They're in their crafting section. I'm also using a crate and then a dowel, but you could also use a plunger handle if you want to grab everything from Dollar Tree. Now, these are the exact perfect size to fit on the sides of one of these crates, and I thought this would make a darling little box. So I'm just using some wood glue on the sides of my crate here, and I'm just going to glue both of those charcuterie boards onto the side of my little crate there so we can make our little box. I like to take my little box I set up up on the table to make sure it has a flat bottom and kind of use my fingers to kind of zhuzh those little charcuterie boards around to make sure all of the lines end up uh, even and everything. And then I just put some wood glue on my dowel and I just carefully slide that in between those. And then I just use a wipe to wipe any excess wood glue off. And then I just kind of press it to make sure everything is good. So I take some little half beads now and I'm just using a little bit of super glue and the wood glue and I'm gluing those on the outside part of where my dowel is. It's going to look like it's covering a little nail head or something. I thought it would be a really cute contrast, completely optional if you decide not to do this part. I haven't yet seen any half beads at Dollar Tree. If you guys have seen anything like that, I would love for you to let me know down in the comments. I do get mine on Amazon. I'll put a link to those down below, but I'm excited and hopeful that Dollar Tree will hopefully come out with something like that fairly soon. I did clamp this together, but I don't think that you would have to do that. I just left it for, to dry for about 30 minutes, but I think without the clamp, you would be fine. But now I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And at first I decided just to paint the entire thing white and kind of start from there and kind of 
look at it and see what I wanted to do with it if I wanted to add contrasting colors or do a pattern or anything like that. So just give this a spray paint or if you just wanna use chalk paint, however you wanna get this painted, you'll just do your choice. When I did get it all painted white, it was very stark and it needed something. So I thought I would go around all of the edges and give kind of that black farmhouse look to it. I thought this was really cute. It took a little bit of patience just to make sure I didn't get black paint spilled over onto the white. Of course, you would have to go back and touch up if you did that. And then just very carefully, I painted those little half beads as well as the handle on it also. In the end, I really love how this turns out with the two-tone, and I'm really glad that I took the time to do this because it really does kind of make this piece. Now, the sides are a little bit plain, and so you can embellish them however you want, or you can leave them. I'm just showing you what I did with mine, so this step is completely optional. I do uh, use a couple, or just one of the chalk couture little stencils here. So when you use chalk couture, you just kind of put it on a little fuzzing mat there. It just kind of makes that stencil not as sticky, so it's not going to tear your paint or anything up. And then you just use chalk paste that they sell and you just kind of put that over with a squeegee it's very much like screen printing when you pull back that the design is revealed and it looks really cute check my description box for more information on chalk couture if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you but just know that you're going to use whatever means you have available to you to embellish yours so it does not have to be like mine this is just meant to be inspiration now i sanded the edges and then i took a little bit of black paint on a baby wipe and i just am running my finger over all of the edges on this and for some reason this is what really made the piece to me i'm not really sure if it just gave it like a defining something or made it look like enamel or what it was but I really, as I started this, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it and I fell in love as I was doing this. I thought it really, really made the piece. So inside and out, I just go over all of the edges and then I even decided to go over the crate, which I wasn't really sure about, but I am so glad that I did because I do like the definition that it gives and like how it turns out. Now, if this is not your style or you're not loving how this looks, obviously skip this step, but it's totally my style and I think it really just screams farmhouse and I love it. Remember to subscribe if you're liking the projects that you're seeing today. These are some of my most favorite farmhouse projects. The next one that I do is my absolute Dollar Tree favorite of all time. This is very close though. I love how this turns out. So I'm gonna show you from a different couple of angles here, depending on your decor or where you wanna set this in your house. You can set it sideways. It looks super cute at an angle or straight on. Either way with a little plant, you could even stick whatever you wanted in there besides a plant. I love how this turns out and I think Literally, this is one of my favorites. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I have this pack of wood slats from Dollar Tree. I think they come with six in a package, plus a couple of wooden boxes, and then a couple of just wooden squares. So I'm just going to make a pillar, I guess, or a column, plant stand, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just going to make a rectangular box out of these wooden flat slats. I'm not sure really what you would call them other than that anyway so you can just see I'm using a combination of wood glue to make it for a long-term hold and then some hot glue to give that short-term hold and I am just taking a couple of dowels and I cut them into pieces to give a little bit more surface area for the glue to kind of adhere to and that's just going to make it a little bit more sturdy and hold its shape a little bit more rather than just having the edge glued together so I'm going to take the box here and I'm going to take the lid off and turn the lid upside down and I'm going to glue the edge of the box and turn it over this is kind of give, going to give us a little bit of architectural element on the pillar so you can see I'm just going to glue that down and I'm going to do the same thing on the other box and then once I get that done I'm going to take those flat square pieces and I'm going to glue the lid of the box to those. So you can just kind of watch closely what I'm doing here. So after I get those glued together and my rectangular box is pretty sturdy and dry, it takes about a half an hour to get it to a really sturdy point. Then I'm just going to glue each end of this to each little um, architectural end. I guess we'll call it that I have made and so you can kind of see it start to come together here and I just kind of spin it because that glue does give you a little bit of working time to get it so it is um, straight and everything and right now I'm not using any hot glue I'm just using the wood glue because I'm gonna set and leave this overnight just to get a really good hard cure to it 
You do want to maybe have a wet cloth. I use some baby wipes around to kind of wipe that glue off because it does drip quite a bit. So after this dries, after a day, I go in with some paint. You can choose whatever paint color you want to paint yours. I wanted to go for a very rustic, um, kind of like obviously farmhouse, but, <laughs> but kind of just uh, something that maybe you had found a piece of something from an old farmhouse or old barn or something that you had taken into your house to use as a plant stand. So I wanted to start with the white base and then go in and add distressing from there. So I give this two really good coats of my white chalk paint. So then I take my emery board and I am just going around every single edge, every single corner and sanding it really good. I even take each of those corners and give it kind of a, a more of a round shape to it. Then I take some antiquing wax and I just do my dry brushing all over it. I get a little bit heavier the further that I go, just kind of depends on how you want it. After I let that dry completely, I do go back in with some more of the white and dry brush over the top of that so it's not so harsh and it kind of softens it. I did go in with a little bit of elephant chalk paint also to kind of give it another little dimension there, but you can see how it looks together here. I'm excited to put this with all of my plants and my little uh, trinkets, different things, you know, just kind of style it really good. But I'm really happy with how this turned out and for just a couple of bucks to get a really good looking, I didn't have to cut anything out of wood. I think it looks great. I love how this DIY turns out and I just want you to know that this 100% came from the brain of Jamie over at Simple Roots Simple Living and I will leave a link to the video where she made this and also her channel down there just so you can check her out if you want to because she is so talented but I loved this DIY and it was so simple and perfect for spring. So I'm just taking one of the candle holders from Dollar Tree and one of the wire baskets and I super glue them to one another. I did end up spray painting them black which I probably really didn't need to do. I kind of thought I would sand this more and the black would shine through so you can actually just go for it with with skipping that step that's why I didn't show me painting it all black but I'm just taking a makeup sponge with a clothespin and I am just dabbing some white chalk paint all over this I will end up covering the whole thing you could even just take this and just spray paint it completely white if you wanted to do that which you know here I go everything's totally white and I ended up not sanding it down but I make a rust color and I love this rust on here I think it looks so good I take um, a brown a maroon an orange and a yellow to make my rust and I'll kind of go over the spots of where I want that rust texture to be and then I'll even go in with just a teeny teeny bit of yellow over and dab it on because if you look at natural rust it really does kind of sometimes have that little yellow fleck and sometimes I mix a little baking soda in it to give it a good texture it just depends on the project that I'm working on you can make this as rusty as you want or not at all if you want to skip that step. I just loved the fact that it looked like it had been sitting out like an egg basket sitting out on the farm for a long time. Now I do go down on that riser, that little candle holder, and I do add a little bit onto that so it looks like it was rusted. And I use a brush to do it on there and I am just tapping to give it that texture. And if you put baking soda in there, this will give it that nice rusty texture, how rust kind of bubbles. And I just do that till your heart's content or till it looks good. And then I just put a little Spanish moss and some eggs in it and look at how adorable this is. I love this. I use it all the time in my spring decor. Actually, I ended up leaving this out through most of the summer last year with just some regular uh, farm eggs in there and it was so cute. I have this little oval sign left over from Christmas time and I just used some spackling to cover in that little hole at the top, sand it down, and I'm just going to cover this completely in some white chalk paint. You can totally pick your own colors that match your own decor to do this. With this sign, I don't need this little end part here. It's a little bit taller than what I need, so I'm just using my saw to cut that off. To me, this oval shape looked kind of like an egg, so I thought it would be fun to make like a little farm fresh egg sign out of it. So I'm just going to use my cutting machine to cut out where it says farm fresh eggs here. And I got this from Cricut Design Space, but you could definitely freehand something. You can use the water slide decal paper, uh, print on tissue paper. There are so many different options that you can do and use to get whatever type of lettering you want on your sign. And then I'm just showing you, I have this cute little rooster that is a Christmas ornament left over. It's from Hobby Lobby. Guys, if you're ever looking for something for tiered trays or to have for some little different embellishments here and there, when the Christmas ornaments come out of Hobby Lobby, think of that as you're looking through them. 
I am just going to cover the back of the sign up, so I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size. I'll take some hot glue and run it all around the perimeter of the sign, and then I will just take my brayer. I do have a link for that down in my description box, and I just roll that hot glue while it's still warm, and it just kind of spreads it out a little bit, and it's going to make that paper stick. Then I just cut it as close as I can, and then I will take my little sander, and I will just, in a slow downward motion, sand around all of the edges, and that backing will look like it was meant to go on the sign and made for it. So now I just take my cute little chicken and I just put hot glue all over the back side. I'm just going to turn it over and glue it to the top portion of the sign. I decided to kind of have it peeking up over the top there. That is completely personal preference there. And then I just use some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree to put on either side and sandwich and make a, a little stand for it. And now I just take one of these little egg cartons. I can't remember if I got this one at Dollar Tree or Walmart. You get them either place and, and they come with a bunch of little fake eggs inside of it. And I'm just gluing that to the back of the sign. And then I'm just gluing a couple little tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom of it so it can stand upright. Just put my cute little eggs in there. And now I'm just going to kind of do some embellishing. I like to go over my vinyl with a little bit of white paint in my brush to kind of make it look not so shiny. And then I always go around the edge of my items with not always, but most of the time with a little bit of antiquing wax to give it a little bit of age and embellishing farmhouse look. Look how cute this looks. I'm so excited to put this in my china hutch with these cute little eggs there. I think this is so fun. I love it. I would love to know what you think of this one. I would like to thank you so much for taking time to watch this compilation make a video. It really means a lot to me. Did your favorite make the list? Did you see something new that you enjoyed? I would love to know down in the comments, either one of those. I always love reading what you guys enjoy seeing. I hope that you have such an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.